<clears throat> Welcome everyone to the webinar on becoming an effective youth advocate. My name is Andrew uh, Palomo. I go by he, him pronouns, and I'm the director of community strategies here at um, the National Network for Youth. Um, <clears throat> on the webinar today is my colleague, Ide Idelia. Um, so I'll let them um, introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Adelio Robinson Confer. I am part of Advocates for Change, which is a YAB in Pennsylvania. Um, in addition to that, I'm a current student at California University of Pennsylvania. I am a senior majoring in psychology, minoring in leadership studies. Um, and outside of school, I spend a lot of my time um, with involved in different organizations and initiatives to address youth homelessness, um, my foster care experiences, as well as housing instability. Um, so I'm excited to be here today to be able to, you know, talk about my experiences and talk about advocacy because it's something I'm extremely passionate about. Yeah, thank you, Idelia. And I just wanted to add, like, Idelia is awesome. And over, um, I've been, we've been working together for what, three years now? Um, yes. And, um, Idelia definitely is a, a, a colleague of mine now. Uh, we uh, have been working on advocacy um, in Western PA and trying to really change the system over there. So a lot of what we're, we're gonna be discussing today are just um, tips and strategies that we both have used while working, um, uh, working in uh, Western PA. Um, so for if any of you are from Western Pennsylvania, you can like, type it in the chat. Um, um, I've got, gotten to know um, a lot of Western PA that I didn't know. Um, they love to put French fries on top of their salads. Uh, I ordered yes, a salad we do. once. Yeah, I ordered a salad once and then it came, it came with French fries and I was like, what is this? But um, it's delicious. Um, anyway, so what brings us, what, brings us here, right? So like one of the first questions, like why are we here and why are we doing this webinar? Um, so I'll pose that question first to I Idelia, like why, why are we here? Just to learn different ways and how to appropriately advocate, um, especially when we're talking about our stories, um, just to learn different advocacy strategies and as well as, you know, just effectively building relationships around us. Yeah, I think you you bring up some really good good points, right? Like how how to build those relationships with like people that can change the system. Uh, that could be legislators, local, and a, as well as federal. We're gonna focus on federal legislation um, here on this webinar, but a lot of the same skill sets work not just not just in federal um, advocacy, but also at the local level and even at the agency level. I would say, right? Like these like abilities. Uh, to tell your story and have an ask, um, et cetera. Um, so <clears throat> today we're just gonna do the intros. We've done that. Um, we're gonna discuss how policy works because I think understanding how policy works. So some of you might find that that's the boring stuff like that no one really like wants to, um, wants to hear, but I'll go really briefly of how how policy works at the federal level. There are some um, there are some similarities at the local level um, and even at the at, at the organizational level of how policies are made. Right. So, um, although we are going to focus on um, federal legislation, the skills of advocacy can actually be uh, transferable to all levels. So uh, we'll talk about how policy works and then actually talk about advocacy strategies and how to actually implement them. So um, before we dive in, um, there is going to be a polling question. We definitely always like to know who our audience is. Um, so we will, uh, there'll be a poll. Um, I'm going to, oh no, um, relaunch the poll, relaunch. There should be a poll that comes up about like how many of you are young adults. Um, so just a uh, binary question, if you're either over 24 or under 24. Um, have you ever met with someone from Congress? Um, and are you excited uh, to do some advocacy? Um, so awesome. Give it a, a few seconds. All right, awesome. 
majority of you have responded. Um, so I'm going to close close the polls in about um, I'm going to give it a, a whole minute. So in 10 seconds. Perfect. And. So I should be sharing the results. I'm not sure if you are able to see it or if it pops up on, on your um, windows. 32% um, uh, of, of the people in attendance are under the age of 24. That's awesome. Um, and then 68% uh, are of, um, over the age of 24 are old, um, are old folks here like myself. Um, I'm in <clears throat> my 40s. Um, we also, um, it's pretty good split of meeting uh, members of Congress or local legislators. 60% um, have, but then a large chunk, 40% have indicated they have not. Um, uh, regarding advocacy, um, overwhelmingly 96% um, have said that uh, you, you are excited and then um, some, and some people are unsure. Um, and that's fine, right? Like, I think that's advocacy is not for everyone. Um, it can be frustrating. Um, it can be, um, uh, give you a headache, especially when like things move really slowly. Um, but I think that is something, um, um, uh, yeah, just to, to note, right? Um, so as we move forward, um, let's see, yes, um, someone did put something in the chat about, will this be recorded uh, for YAM members who are not able to attend? And absolutely. So um, it will be recorded. There's actually a toolkit that will be emailed to all of you at the end. So we actually have placed, um, uh, made a nice like 10, pa uh, 10 page toolkit uh, with, uh, with all of this information as well. So both in video and in toolkit form. So I'm, like I said, I'm from the National Network for Youth. So our mission is to transform systems so that no young person in America experiences homelessness, right? So I'm gonna go quickly over this. Um, there's three main areas of what we do. Our uh, National Youth Advisory Council, which is made up our, of young leaders, um, colleagues, as I call them, who help us guide the, our policy uh, decision-making. Our public education and policy and, and policy advocacy, that's when we're actually going out meeting with Congress. We have lots of meetings with congressional staffers and with um, uh, federal, federal staffers in order to ensure that like regulations are being in, implemented as they were supposed to and to change regulations or change the law when needed. We also do training and technical assistance. We work uh, with various communities throughout the country um, in various aspects. So uh, feel free to email me if you would like us to come to your community, um, et cetera. So that's just a little rundown about who we are. Um, already did the polling. So we'll go straight into how, how policy works, right? So the US Constitution in the first article, and if you read section eight, specifies what Congress can do. Right, and it actually specifies in great detail, um, and that Congress is responsible, right, to institute laws that are necessary and proper to carry out their responsibility. Right, so we know that like the Constitution of the United States outlines those specific um, duties to to Congress. Right, so they are responsible for creating these laws, right? At the local level, right? The, that same, um, right? There's charters at the local level. There's also state state constitutions as well that guide their own state legislation. Charters at the local level, if, if you live in counties or in the parish level, depending on which, which state you live in. But there's always some something that guides how laws are, are, are uh, made. Um, and how regulations are made. And that's really like where our advocacy um, kind of like falls in, like really targeting where are those decisions made and being able to influence those decisions, right? So that is, um, that is what we're trying to do. And just really briefly, um, this is just our way of um, simplifying uh, the bill making process. And for those of you on the um, those sixty percent of us here that are slightly older than twenty four, uh, this is like the modern version of like Schoolhouse Rock, um, 
how a bill is made, right? So there was like in the 70s, this show that um, actually showed how bills were made and it was a cartoon um, and there was a catchy song that went with it. Um, but for us, like, you know, it starts with an idea. Um, start, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Lyndon Hernandez. You're right, I love Schoolhouse Rock, right? Um, uh, but the policy making process always starts with an idea, right? Like someone has an idea, we need a new law, we need something new. Um, and then they write it up in a bill. Uh, that bill goes to a committee where like people discuss it, like um, and uh, bipart. Usually it could be bipartisan um, and being able to discuss like what are the pros and cons of this bill. Um, and ideally like there are debates and they vote for them on the house floor. Um, so um, once it's approved, um, then the president signs it into law, right? Um, it sounds like an easy process. It's actually really cumbersome. It takes a long time. And at any point, the bill can be shot down, right? Like, so we can like see that like that idea was just voted no, right? And then, um, and then we have to start the advocacy process again and then push it forward and, and continue moving until um, there is change, right? So I think that is um, at least that is the policy making process in a nutshell without boring you all to death. Um, there are, um, uh, I have um, my, I'm uh, going to finish my doctorate in, in, in public policy. So you can get an entire degree on knowing this process, but this is just a very small uh, view, view of that. And then, <clears throat> But how are these ideas made? And these ideas really come from, from you all, right? Comes from um, uh, practitioners, uh, comes from uh, providers, but, but some of the coolest ideas actually come from youth action boards, right? Like, so they come from, from our young people um, and actually some of the most innovative, innovative um, ideas and solutions actually do come from young people. So really focusing on that is, is um, crucial and why we we feel like here at the national network that like we need to um, build the capacity among youth action boards in order to do that advocacy to be able to then actually like make that change right so policymakers need to hear you they need to hear what's going on they need to know what's happening in their in their backyard they need to know um, what are these innovative solutions um, that can um, that can be implemented so being able to um, share stories and sharing like what that means um, is really important, right? <clears throat> so communities inform Congress, right? Like I can't, uh, like I wish I could like highlight that. That is how it's supposed to work, right? Um, this is the ideal, right? Like I, I, I mean, I've, I've sat through a lot of um, conversations with my, uh, um, with my colleagues and my friends, right? Like that, that process, you know, it's kind of like, it doesn't work as well as we intended to, right? Like um, um, Citizens United was um, uh, a court case where um, uh, private companies now have a lot more influence, right? Like, so it's not perfect, right? Like, so I, I, I do want to say that, I do want to like make that really clear. However, like, it still, it, it still is important for us to have a voice and it still is important for us to um, uh, it, tell our stories to those people that can make the changes, right? Um, and being able to um, uh, end youth homelessness through uh, le legislative advocacy. And again, like it's those ideas, those voices, those actions that really need to bubble up from the community to inform how policies um, are made and, and inform like good policies that are going to work, right? Um, and then hopefully create um, those, um, those policies. But then how do you strategize in order to really like be able to tell um, uh, your story and being able to make that effective change, right? And um, uh, we've been using a strategy called ROAR um, and I'll have Idelia talk about how that strategy has been implemented and, and what that strategy really is. 
So as Andrew said, Roar is something that I have been using and I still continue to use because I find it very helpful. Um, so as you can see, it says first research, learn about your members of Congress. So before you go and speak, you know, it's important to become familiar with who your audience is, especially if they are decision makers, you know, find out who they are, why they are here, what do they want to learn from your story. And then we have outreach. Um, this is the process of, you know, reaching out to schedule that meeting to make it happen. Uh, and then advocacy, which is, you know, just discussing what is happening in your community. By sharing our stories and our, in our experiences, you know, we can inspire the change. We are the experts and it's crucial for our voices to be heard. Um, and then last, we have relationship building. Again, this is really important. Um, you know, just overall en engaging and educating the audience is important. Um, whether this be just meeting with local officials, sign on letters, petitions, inviting them to our, our YAB events. Um, this is really crucial and important when moving forward to make those connections. This is still something, like I said, I, I use to, you know, to be more prepared and more organized when speaking. Um, and using ROAR has helped me, you know, develop the skills and the strategies for effective advocacy going forward. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I think something about like even researching your member of Congress, I think something that like we spent a lot of time with with you, ideally, I was that like Western Pennsylvania is very um, conservative and like strategizing how we're going to have those discussions, right? Like what what's going to actually be effective. Um, um, and one of your representatives is really big on education, right? Like, and, and framing, um, I just remember us talking about like, oh, he's really, really big on education. So we, we, we need to focus on like a, an educational story because that's really going to have an impact. Um, and then even like the inviting to like the YABs, right? Like um, we were doing this work during COVID. Um, so I, I think that prevented um, them from actually coming, but that's uh, like, yeah, we still invite them, right? Like we are like, hey, you should still come and, and see what's happening in your, right in your backyard. Um, and then, and oh, go for it. With this is obviously strategic storytelling. Um, so with storytelling from my experiences and from what I have learned, um, it's important for us first to understand that we only have to share as much information as we're comfortable sharing. Our stories are unique. Um, and as I said before, we are the experts. Um, and it's important to share our stories in a way that is meaningful, effective, and safe. Um, and I think also when we're sharing our stories, it's important to focus on the positive. Talk about what has worked for you. Was it a program? Was it a person? What was it? So I know for me, for instance, um, there's a number of different things, but I always like to focus on, you know, I had a specific mentor, a specific person um, that has helped me. So when I'm talking to the audience, I think it's important to, you know, make it visual. How did she make me feel? How did my mentor, you know, what did she help me? She helped me navigate the, you know, the complex system. She helped me, she, she gave me hope. Um, so, you know, talk about the significance of those positive moments um, and let the audience know what it means to you. Um, this allows the audience and others to know, to absorb the, the message and the meaning behind what you're saying in a story format rather than hearing statistics. Yeah, no, thank you. And I think to really highlight, like, I think something that I've noticed, and 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 I'm going to be very honest, that I think we've done this um, from time to time is um, almost like having young people tell tell their trauma, right? That's not what we're saying here, right? Like, it is like like what um, Idelia was mentioning. It was about those uplifting stories, right? Like what did work right like because what worked is going to be the solution right and i think like when when you mentioned idealia about like it was my mentor it was like who it was this person that helped me navigate this complex system right this system that that like sucks right like and being able to have someone that was able to guide me through it really helped me right like and i think that story right like is is um uh is different, right? Like then, like like I remember the early two thousands, right? Like uh, when um, uh, when I was asked to share my homeless experience, right? Like and it, it was almost like I how how bad can I make this story or how like I had to like tell like the the or I felt at the time that like I had to tell like uh, 
like my abuse history and all this other stuff, right? Like, and I think like mo we're moving away from that, right? Like we don't want people to share, we don't want to re-traumatize people, right? Like, I think that's also the reality that like, that's not what we're, we're here to do. Um, and then finally, I think something that was left out um, is um, payment. Um, we like, right, like we pay young people the same way that like I'm at those meetings getting paid um, as a, as a, um, uh, as I'm working, right? Like, and I'm getting, a, a getting paid for being at those meetings, we pay our YAD members, right? Like, I, and, I, and that's just something um, to be very clear that like when they're engaging um, in any of these activities that like you're making sure that they're paid, they're paid, right? Like, and that they are, um, are getting um, everything that they need. Um, and then also planning, right? Like, I think, I think you also alluded to that, right? Idelia that like, it wasn't just a, oh, get on the phone, right? Like, I think we met like two or three times, like to go over, um, um, over, over this. I don't know if you want to give, give some, um, some highlights of like, what it took to get to that point. Yes, we did meet a number of different times. I remember being extremely nervous because it was one of my first times like telling my story in front of, you know, Congress, um, you know, local legislators. And I feel like, you know, in the beginning, I know I even shared with you, Andrew, that in the past when I was given opportunities to talk about my story, you know, I would have certain organizations and certain individuals, you know, persuade me to talk about certain things. So this was my first time to be able to, you know, share what I wanted to share and learn how to effectively, you know, as I'm saying, storytelling um, and doing it in a more positive way to focus on the solutions moving forward and how to better help youth in the future. Yeah, and we, we did, and I think that's the other thing that people forget, right, like is like, we did meet a handful of times. So it wasn't just like, um, it wasn't just that you were, you felt comfortable right away sharing your story about your mentor. It took some time, right? And I think that was like um, practicing, crafting. I I think you even sent me a draft of your of your story, right? And like you know, we critiqued it and like went over it, right? And I think that's um, when we talk about storytelling and, and strategic storytelling, right? The word strategic, right? Like, what does that mean, right? Like, and it, it really is that we're being strategic and we are like taking the time to work with young people and craft that story that's going to have the maximum impact, right? And, um, and I really like what you, uh, what you, uh, what you said that like, it, it's, this is us as providers, like for the providers that are on the on the call, giving up power, right? Like, so when Idelia mentioned that, like in in prior uh, prior times, like when she was asked to speak, they were uh, people were telling telling her, "This is what you need to focus on. This is what you need to um, uh, say." Um, and then what we're saying with about storytelling is. No, take the opposite approach. Have have this have this uh, person, this young leader, dictate what it is that they feel that they want to share, right? Uh, and what is that positive story that they want to share, right? So that is um, uh, that's something that, like, I think, like as a as a as a whole, our our um, our field needs to move in that direction to be able to make young people feel um, comfortable. Um, and then also having them tell the, the story that they want to tell, not the story that we want them to tell. Um, I think that's also um, really good. Um, and then here are just some strategies on how to really effectively, uh, um, some of the components of, of that story. So um, I'll, I'll bounce it back off to you, Idelia. Oh no, did we lose you? Can you hear me? Now I can, yes. Okay, so first setting the stage, obviously lay the groundwork of your story, describe the setting, the context, and establishing the states. Um, describe the challenge. In your first few sentences, you'll want to hook your audience by making them want to know what happens next. Convey the struggle. Describe your struggles with vivid language, strong adjectives, key details that captivate the audience. 
And then as well as highlight the turning point, it can be the moment of discovery or the moment of the greatest tension that leads to the resolution of the main conflict. So maybe when I'm telling my story, an example of this would just be, you know, there were times where, you know, I wasn't sure where, what was going to happen to me next. And, you know, now, you know, eight years later, I'm graduating college in December. So, you know, it's just talking about you know, the process and the turning points and the moments that, you know, you were able to realize, you know, and discover that moment. And then last, reach closure. This is the final well-crafted sentence that you leave with the policymaker. Reemphasize the importance of your story and include <coughs> a registration of the ask, which is going back to what, you know, setting the stage and leading the groundwork of your story. Yeah. Thank you. And I, and I think like, like you, like what you said, like, it really is like highlighting those positive things as well as like those challenges that have happened. Right. So it's a nice balancing act and, and setting the stage. What is our ask? Right. Um, do you remember what our ask was when we um, were meeting with legislators? I believe it was the white deep funding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're absolutely correct. So like um, when we were doing this um, about um, in the spring, it was about the YHDP, YHDP the Youth Homeless Demonstration Project that um, uh, Western PA was going after. I'm crossing my fingers that you all get it. Um, but we were talking with legislators to sign letters of support. We were talking to legislators about like being on like planning committees and all this other stuff. Um, and we did, we did get letters of support, right? And I think like, uh, at least now they're aware that like this, their community might be, might be getting like this like multi-million dollar uh, uh, project. Um, and so yeah, I mean that that was our ask. So like, and and why it's important to have youth specific programming, um, and if they sign right, like uh, we were making that connection. If they sign these letters of support, it could potentially bring lots of money into the community um, and impact young people in their areas um, and and really fun youth specific programming um, and 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 these programs are needed because of what um, uh, what our young people are going through like idelia navigating these complex systems and we need those system navigators we need the we need those mentors that can help young people navigate navigate those systems and that's why we need your support in this grant right so i just give you a little example of like how like um uh we did like uh did a little bit of a closure with um uh with those legislators that we uh met um the uh, state representatives of, of pennsylvania um, And then, you know, a, just to hone in on this, like, you know, the benefits of strategic storytelling really is that like um, connecting with with the legislators, right? Like and being able to um, uh, give them a different narrative um, through through these stories, right? So they that way they can um, connect with us and then hopefully support our cause. Um, and the conversations, right? Like, I think like something that we oh, like, we like uh, always coach our young people and our young leaders is like, right? Like, remember like a TED talk or like one of your your favorite artists like Beyonce and how like they go up there and just talk about their story and uh, with confidence. And that's similar to what we are we what we want um, our our conversations to be. Um, And then <clears throat> something that like uh, a quote from Maya Angela, one of my um, favorite poets, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel, right? And I think that's, um, that's something that like in, in strategic storytelling, like how, right, that that's really like what we're trying to do is like, have them feel something, right? Like, and, and like, um, and being able to, um, leave that impression so that way they remember us so that way the, when they're making decisions when they're making a decision um a policy decision that they are 100 like oh yeah that's right i uh 
there's that group in Western PA that needs my support and this could really help them. Um, so that is uh, one way that we can definitely, um, strategic storytelling is how, how we can do that. Um, and the way we do that, right, it's uh, heart, mind, um, and then also political health is also important. Like, are you up for re-election? Uh, because uh, maybe we can sway constituencies to vote for you if you support this cause, right? Uh, um, or, or are you, uh, is this your last term and you don't care? So um, push this through because um, it's the right thing to do. Um, or sometimes the opposite is um, you're never going to vote for this. So I'm not even going to try to convince you, right? Like, I think that that happens as well. So um, um, we will see. <clears throat> so we talked about the strategies, roar, um, and then like how to tell your story, um, and then actually having that meeting, right? Like, and actually like having that meeting with a legislator, um, federal or local, um, and then I'll. Um, toss this back to you, Idelia, to uh, explain um, what to expect in a meeting. Yes, I remember also going over the, with this with you thoroughly a few times also, but um, so to start, obviously you wanna introduce yourself, share your name, your organization, your roles. So similar like I did earlier, you know, my name is Idelia Robinson Confer, you know, I'm part of Advocates for Change, which is in Pennsylvania. Um, I'm a regional leader. And then the ask invest in programs and services. So in the spring, as Andrew and I were talking about, we were advocating and asking for funding for the YHDP. So this is where, you know, I would present that question. Um, and then I'd move on to share a personal story, which would be about myself. So this is somewhere where, you know, I would talk about how my situation started. So it should have a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, and then I need to circle back to the app, which is like I said, in the spring was the YHD funding. DP funding, um, which is obviously investing in youth, young people through programs and services. Um, and this is also somewhere where you, you, when you're circling back to the ask, you, you know, you add that little, you know, investing in youth is an opportunity to re reunite social and economic goals. And because of this program or this person, I was able to, you know, move forward and with the, the, the um, support and the resources provide provided to me, I was able to, you know, overcome some of my, my experiences. Um, and then with this, you know, you do your thank yous and your follow ups um, with your local or your representatives or whoever you may have met with. Yeah. And how was the meeting? Was it scary? I remember processing with this with you. Um, and I think you were nervous at first, but then we met with like eight legislators in one day. So uh, by the end, how was it? By the end, I think I slowly start to realize that you know they are they are people too, um, and I don't know. I think as the the meetings went on and the farther we got through them, I felt a lot more comfortable um, because I I kind of knew what to expect going forward. Yeah, and also like, um, some were more enthusiastic than others, right? Like I think that was something I definitely, and that's with any um any of these meetings so some are very supportive and then some are just like okay thanks bye um so um and then we also did this during covid so i also wanted to um put that out there that all these meetings were done virtually so it was a little bit different um, um than like having like the in-person meetings and going to congress um that is our that's something that ideally and i are going to do um in, um, in the spring, if COVID is, allows us to, and we are able to have in-person um, meetings again with congressional staffers. There is a form um, that, right, like everything that I, Idelia um, um, said, like um, this also will be emailed to you, um, but like this, this form was just something like uh, to have a one page like summary of like what your ask was, right? Like, and, 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 and reminders, like what you should cover, right? Uh, so say your name, your organization. Um, something I realized, especially for if, if, if it's your first time, 
um, you, uh, things um, go by really quickly and you might forget. Um, and they're also really quick meetings. Um, do you remember how long the meetings were, Idelia? Each meeting? I know we were there all day, but like, but how I long believe, was each individual meeting? I believe some of them for, were like anywhere from five to 10 minutes. They went really quick though. <laughs> no, exactly, right? Like, so that's also another thing that like there, these meetings are really quick. They're five to 10 minutes um, uh, because these congressional staffers are super busy. And especially um, when we were meeting with them, they were super busy with um, the relief packages, right? Like getting those through, right? Um, and they're doing multiple projects all at the same time. So uh, they're, they're dealing with a lot. So um, the meeting were really short and telling your story um, in like two minutes, right? Like, it's like, all right, um, uh, uh, we, cause that was something else that I think we forgot. Like we had a time, right? Like with timing you all, like, all right, say your story and then like and and i remember i remember timing you uh, and making sure it was under two minutes um because these meetings go fast and congressional staffers depending on like what the next meeting is they will cut you off right like they will say hey i have another meeting and i have a hard stop right and you might be in the middle of your story and if you didn't finish it you didn't finish it uh, because they have an important meeting that they also another another important meeting that they need to attend um, but this sheet was just a um, um, something helpful, right? Like uh, to to jot down like your name and then carrying it carrying it with you. Um, I know I know you had this in front of you, Idelia, uh, going through it. So as you were as we were doing the meeting, you had all your reminders. Yes, and I think it was a great way because like I, I've never used this before prior to that meeting, and I used to just talk and I'd be all over the place, but. Um, this is actually still something I use when I speak at, you know, local events and stuff that because it helps me, you know, be more organized. And... No, exactly. And I think being organized and succinct and being able to um, succinct meaning um, to be very like um, direct and to the point. Right. And I think, uh, yeah, it, with these um, legislators, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And this is actually the picture of us meeting um with uh the state uh uh state representative right so um and this is all of us that uh, were on on those zoom calls all day long um i wasn't on all of them but you were on all of them right idelia yes i was <laughs> yeah so just an example of how we can um uh virtual uh, advocacy um is something that we can definitely um still do And then lastly, <clears throat> just wanted to really say that action policy is a two-way street, right? Like, so um, policy making is a two-way street, right? Like to understand public issues, um, policies um, are not the, ex uh, policymakers are not the experts, right? Like, um, especially in youth homelessness, the experts are young people themselves. They're the ones who know what has worked and what has not worked, right? Like um, when, um, when I go uh, meet with YABs all over the country and even like even advocates for change in Western PA, like every young person has a story of how the system didn't work for them, right? And I think that's something um, that we hear constantly. Um, and, and, um, they have those, they have the solutions, right? Like I remember in um, the Advocates for Change, um, one of the one of the issues was um, coordinated entry. They were like, coordinated entry doesn't work for us, right? Like it needs to, it needs to be reworked, right? Um, I remember that's something that like came up um, in, in the meetings with the YABs in Western Pennsylvania. Um, and policymakers, in order to make those um, decisions, they need to be well, well informed, right? And they need to be able to know whether or not they should vote on, on an issue um, and with your, with your input and your knowledge, right? Um, they rely on information from stories and re in real life examples, right? So the more that they get to know you, the more like, uh, uh, they might support your interests, right? And I think that is um, uh, crucial. And especially now where earmarks um, are, are back. So earmarks are 
um, discretionary money that um, um, certain um, congressional people can um, give to their communities. Um, and hey, that's something that you can tap, right? And the, and the only way that you can tap that is by forming that relationship with, with Congress um, and with your congressional um, leads in order to uh, get some of those um, earmarks, right? Um, and policymakers gather all of this information, right? Like they gather information um, and are, then make a decision. So they're staffers, that's their job, right? Like if you bring up an issue um, um, and it's something that they wanna support, then their staffers are gonna do the research. They're gonna ask you for, for more information. They're gonna ask you for what's not working. What's, uh, what would you like us to change, right? Um, so those are things um, to be uh, extremely mindful um, of. So with that, um, um, I'll leave it. Um, that's really our presentation in a nutshell. Anything else you want to add, Idelia? Oh, no, you're back on mute. All right, I'll take that as a no. Um, nothing to add. Um, feel free to interrupt if you do. Um, and if anyone has questions, you can type it into the Q and A box or in um, or in the chat, and then either Idelia or myself will um, can answer them. So feel free to um, feel free to put questions or anything else you would like. Can you hear me now, Andrew? Yeah. Okay. So sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, you asked me if there's anything else I wanted to add. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm still learning how to advocate. Um, I think it's been an interesting process learning how to effectively, you know, storytell and be able to share my experiences. Because there are instances, instances where, you know, after I, I do share my story or I'm meeting with people, um, I do struggle because it, it is hard to, you know, talk about your story and, you know, being comfortable sharing. Um, but going forward, I think it is important to understand that as, you know, I think, Andrew, you mentioned that even when I was meeting with members from Congress, talking to people in DC, there were people that, you know, didn't seem to listen. There were people that listened more than others. But, you know, I feel like as, you know, we're here, we're able to speak on behalf of our experiences going forward. And if we could potentially, you know, just help one youth or help one other person, um, I think we're doing the right thing. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so no questions. Um, so again, if there are questions, feel free to um, place them in the chat or on the Q&A box. Um, there will be a, um, uh, an email sent with the toolkit and with the, um, the form that I mentioned that was helpful for, uh, for people to stay focused and on track. So that's going to be emailed to everyone. Um, then also just remember, like if there's anyone wants to become a member, feel free. Um, just plugging that in and and thank you, right? Um, and that's some of our young leaders from our NYAC, our National Youth um, Advisory Council. Um, and this is pre-COVID, uh, where they were um, always um, uh, always uh, meeting with Congress, especially in March when we hold our our summit. So we are hosting a um, hybrid summit this uh, this year in March. Um, cross fingers. Currently, it's hybrid. Uh, so there is an in-person option. Um, and thank you, Martin Martinez, uh, for, for um, joining the webinar. And if there are no questions, we will uh, wrap up 15 minutes early and give you back that time. Um, and then feel free to share um, the webinar recording to any of the YAB members that are out there. So that way they can um, effectively advocate. Um, and then uh, be on the lookout for that toolkit, because that will be something that um, people will be able to use. All right. And with that, um, thank you all. Um, and if there are any questions, um, feel free to email me. I'm um, uh, andrew.palomo at nn4y.org. Um, so feel free to uh, shoot me an email. 
uh, with any questions that you all may have. And with that, have a awesome uh, rest of your day. Um, and we look forward to uh, seeing you all at the next uh, webinar. All right, thanks, Idelia. Thank you. All right, bye.